Good morning, Church. Ayan. Kamusta po kayo ngayong umaga? Ayan. Amen. So this time po, I will not ask about your health. Ayan. Kasi I remember the last time when I asked about health, ang daming nag-react. So this, this day, ang kakamusahin ko lang po kung kamusta po kayo. And then, dumating po ba sa point in life niyo when you ask, Will God never leave us nor forsake us? Sige po. Situations that leave us alone and abandoned happen at all time. At some point, you may have encountered the words, I'm leaving. I don't love you anymore. Or minsan, sa, kum sa kumpanya po, you've been terminated from this company. Or worse, Someone from your family died due to accident or due to overdose. Minsan naman po, we hear it to our friends when they say to you, we can't be friends anymore. Heartbreaking moments like this can turn our world upside down, leaving us to pick up the pieces with a big gaping hole of loneliness in the middle of our souls. Yet, we have a promise from God that He will never leave us or forsake us. God is at work in us, in our difficulties, and in situations, even though trials and challenges will, always, will not always be removed from our lives. Hebrew 13.5 says, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have, for He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Can I ask everyone to stand up? Ayan. Sige po, um, let us welcome one another this morning. I encourage everyone to roam around to shake the hands of our brethren. I-welcome po natin sila. Kawayan po natin sila. Sige po. on your feet to sing with us as we sing songs of praise and worship sa ating Panginoon. Amen? Again, amen? Amen. Are we all ready to worship our Lord this morning? Amen. Can we give our best clap for Him, church?
the fires of a thousand burning suns Blazing in the heavens, there is only one He is our God Who commands the nations, building up and tearing down Silencing His rivals, there is only one He is our God question. Sino po dito yung nagsiswimming? Or marunong mag-swimming? Can you raise your hand? Sige po. Yan. Yung mga hindi po takot sa tubig. Isipin po natin na yung swimming pool are the problems, challenges na binabato ng mundo sa inyo. And of course, sa pool, you always go down. You always go down sa loob ng tubig. Tama po. And once you go down, what do you do? Do you stay sa loob ng tubig? Of course, you have to go up. You have to breathe the air. Tama po. Because once you stay longer sa water, what will happen to you? Maubusan ka ng hangin. And you'll curl up Desperately. Sa ating susunod na kanta po, let us be in the holy presence of our Lord. Let us be um, whatever struggles you have, whatever problems or situations you are currently in. 
He laid down at the feet of the Lord. Let the daily bread of our lives be the very words spoken by God. So join us as we sing the songs. Meditate on the things that the Lord has spoken to us.
Heavenly Father, we come before your presence. We are singing because you are so good to us. This is a testament, Lord, of your goodness, of your mercy, of your grace. Ama namin nasa langit, alam namin na we cannot move, we cannot do anything, we will not be energized at all without you. We cannot have life in us. And so, Father, we just give you back all the glory because you have given us life. Ama namin nasa langit, Maraming mga suliranin na mga bumabagabag sa amin. We have gone through another week probably of difficulty sa mga kapatiran namin na nasa banig ng uh, kahirapan, uh, maybe in the bed of sickness, Father. We remember them in prayer today. Touch them with your healing hand, O God, and comfort them with your goodness. Para, Lord, sa mga nahirapan sa trabaho, sa kanilang schooling, some of the students, kahit na yung iba nakabakasyon ngayon, some of them are still struggling uh, with schooling. So, Heavenly Father, we pray. And some of us are probably struggling with finances, Lord. We pray that you touch them with your provision, Lord. You give them, the, grant them the necessities that they need in life. And we know, Father, that we can trust no one except you because you are a great, the great provider for us. Lord, sa aming bansa, we are just praying, Father. Uh, you know the situation, Lord. Uh, economically, Lord, we are so down again. Uh, gasolina, oil prices are going up and up. And uh, we just suffered through several cases, Lord, ng uh, typhoons and uh, much of yung, uh, North Luzon ay... Uh, Pektado pa rin hanggang ngayon. Even up to now, na wala nang ulan, ay may mga lugar pa rin, Lord, yung mga binabaha at hindi makadalo yung trapiko. It's, it's causing great economic difficulty for us. And we know, Father, yung mga crops, yung mga pan pananim na nasira ng mga bagyo, babalik po sa amin lahat yun in, in economic difficulty. Heavenly Father, through all of this, Lord, wala kaming ibang mapuntahan at matakbuhan except yung inyong pangalan. Lord, help us as we groan in these seasons, Lord, ng, ng buhay namin. And Lord, we pray that even as we are suffering yung mga ganito, Lord, spiritually, Lord, grant us the, the power, Lord. Grant us, Lord, the energy that is coming from you, that we may recover. Kung kami man, Lord, ay naapektuhan, yung makamag-anak man kaming affected, while we are praying for them, allow us also, Lord, to give a helping hand, to allow us, Lord, to reach out and, and be a source of comfort also to other people. And Lord, grant us, Lord, the blessedness na maintindihan ng mga tao sa paligid namin that being your children, it really is something to be grasped and something to be desired because you are sparing us from all these difficulty in life because we are obedient to you. And we know, Father, we know. For a fact, we know, Father, na kahit anong ayos ng aming spiritual life in front of you, eh, may mga pagsubok at may mga dagok din na dumadating sa amin personal. Tinatamaan din kami ng sakit, tinatamaan din kami ng kahirapan, and so on and so forth. But this is our prayer, Father. You let the people see, the people around us, you let them see how good you are a God to us so that they may see and they may envy the God that we are worshiping, the only one true God of heaven and earth. And Father, as we continue to worship today, tanggapin mo po yung aming pagsamba. We are giving you our hearts. We are giving you our attention this morning. You are, we, are, we are giving you the praises of our lips. Because you alone, the only one, you are alone. You are our God. And Father, we worship you because you have made us your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated.
isang pagpalang umaga po, mga kapatid. Maaraw na umaga sa atin. No? Puri yan po ang Panginoon. It's been uh, many days din na uh, nag-uulan. And uh, salamat at uh, mukhang umuho pa na rin po ang baha. Actually, we're closely monitoring the prog- ah, yung situation po sa north. No? May mga kapatiran po tayo doon, uh, especially in Pampanga. And salamat sa Panginoon uh, that uh, God is uh, sustaining them. Salamat din sa mga kapatiran na nagpapaabot ng uh, uh, assistance doon sa mga kapatid po natin sa Pampanga. So purin po ang Panginoon no, sa araw po na ito. Kumusta po kayo mga kapatid? Mabuti naman? I don't know how prepared you are to listen to the Word of God and to encounter His presence ngayon pong oras po na ito. No? I hope na may level of excitement no, uh, sa atin sa oras po na ito. Na hindi lang makinig but uh, to really respond uh, sa salita ng ating pong Panginoon. Uh, by the way, uh, after our service, itong second service, alam niyo po ba mapalad po kayo of all the three services? Itong second service... Kasi we'll be having an activity after this service. So nandito na kayo, makakasama po namin kayo sa pag-welcome sa ating mga first, ah, mga, tata ito, mga new members. Yan. Yung ating pong uh, right hand of fellowship, uh, we will do that uh, right after this service. And narito po sila, no? I think, pwede ba nating, uh, may we request uh, our Uh, members, na may welcome po sa ating uh, right hand to please stand up. Ayan, meron din sa likod. Pwede po kayong tumayo lang uh, so that uh, you may be recognized. Ayan, meron din sa likod. Ayan, so ipagpe-pray po natin sila mamaya and uh, we'll be having a special program for them. Thank you so much po mga patid. Please take your seats. Ayan, so puri po ang Panginoon no? because uh, God is doing great things sa ating pong buhay at sa ating pong iglesia. And uh, today, we're continuing our series. Ito pong uh, We Are Church. And we are now on the, uh, I think, second month uh, sa ating pong pag-aaral po nitong uh, We Are Church. By the way, today is the first week of August. Are you aware po na ang kasunod na buwan na po nito ay Bermans na po? Aware po kaya? Ang bilis, napakabilis ang panahon, no? <laughs> o sa Marichan na yan, <laughs> pagdating ng uh, September. Ayan, so, uh, if you remember, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I talked to you about uh, the purpose of the church. And we learned that the purpose of the church is to make disciples, no? So, disciple making is at the very heart of the mission of the church. Hindi po ba? And so, I gave to you a wonderful definition And I, I use this definition I, because uh, it conveys, ano, do sa mga salita nito, uh, what the church is supposed to be focusing on. What should be, we be doing ano, as a local church? And uh, I borrowed this definition from a man of God, uh, si Edmund Chan. And this is uh, what he says about disciple making. Pwede ba nating basahin po na sabay-sabay? Uh, ready? Disciple making is the process of bringing people into the right relationship with God and developing them to full maturity in Christ through intentional growth strategies that they might multiply the entire process, uh, process in others also. Now, this is a long uh, definition. Uh, I'm, I'm sure yung iba medyo nakahabaan dito sa definition na But for us to understand it more, Uh, ito po ay nahati po sa apat po na bahagi, ano, for uh, sections. The first part, uh, it's talking about the process of bringing people together. So I want you to understand that disciple making is a process. Hindi po ito isang uh, bultuhan na given na agad. No? So it's a process that we need to undergo as uh, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first part, is talking about yung uh, drawing people to God, bringing people to Christ. So, kung napansin niyo po sa ating pong, uh, mga words po dyan sa ating kanan, meron po yung draw, develop, deploy. So, may similarity po yan dito sa definition po na ito. So, ang first part is bringing people to a right relationship with God. Of course, it starts with the gospel proclamation. We teach the, uh, the people, we proclaim to them uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ so that they will be drawn uh, to God. No? So, kasama rin dyan, when they respond to uh, Jesus as uh, their Lord and Savior, so they become believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
they get baptized, so they became part of the church. So, yan yung membership process. No? Then, yung second part po is developing them to full maturity in Christ. Now, uh, this is very crucial, mga kapatid. Let me say, this is very important. It napakahabang, mahabang ano po ito, proseso itong uh, second part. But the problem is, usually, dito po nag-i-skip uh, ang marami. Kapag po ba kayo nanonood ng video, minsan may mga in-skip po kayo na part. Oh, ayoko na. Gusto ko, doon ako sa susunod. Di ba? So, even in our Christian life, sometimes, may tendency po tayo to skip yung mga important sections no? uh, in our spiritual growth. And because of that, in, uh, the reason, that's the reason why hindi, hindi ta, maaaring hindi tayo lumalago ano? dahil uh, we are skipping that. So, ito po ang magiging pag-uusapan natin ngayon, yung developing people to full maturity in Christ. And then, uh, uh, sa mga susunod na weeks, we'll be talking about uh, intentional growth strategies. Ano yung mga pwede natin gawing paraan para tayo ay mag- lumago sa ating pong, uh, uh, relationship with the Lord. And then, lastly, that they might multiply the enterprise process in others. So, multiplication. So, yung iba po, uh, para madaling tandaan, nilagyan nila yan ng apat na words. No? Yung unang part is membership. Second part is maturity. Third is ministry. And fourth ay mission or multiplication. As I said, many Christians want, or sabi natin, they are not aware na meron pong second part. No? They, they tend to skip dun sa second part. Gusto natin, ay gusto kong mag-serve sa ministry. Ay gusto kong mag-multiply. Those, those are good things, mga kapatid. But we need to undergo the process uh, rightly, ano, para, uh, so that there will be fruit sa ating mga buhay bilang mga followers ng ating Panginoon. So today, uh, what we'll be focusing on is ito pong second part, which is maturity in Christ. And uh, one of the problems uh, when we talk about maturity is that we have different misconceptions pag sinabi po yung maturity or spiritual maturity. Magkaka- Even nga po yung mga Christian leaders, no, pag pinag-usapan po yung maturity or spiritual maturity, minsan iba-iba rin ang sagot. No? Uh, what is spiritual maturity? So there are so many misconceptions about the term spiritual maturity or maturity in Christ. Some people think they are maturing or they are undergoing spiritual maturity, but the truth is uh, they are not allowing God to mold them uh, to spiritual maturity. We think that it's a given sa buhay natin bilang mga Kristiyano. And so, tinan po natin ngayon, uh, ito po ang ating pong pag-aaralan. What does spiritual maturity mean? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin po nito? Ano, sabi ko nga, marami mga misconceptions and ito yung mga un, uh, una nating i-discuss ngayon, ano, yung mga myth. Or when, when you say myth, these are false understanding or false or misconceptions about spiritual maturity. And the first one is that of age. We think that as we, uh, kumbaga, pag matagal na tayo na Kristiyano, automatically we are mature in Christ. Nakita niya? So we think na patagalan ito. Ako ay 40 years ng Christian. And so we are thinking that we are more mature to a, a than a 3-year-old Christian. But let me tell this mga kapatid, no, it's not it's not age. Hindi hindi, hindi yung length ng ating pagiging Kristiyano ang batayan para masabi natin na tayo po ay spiritually mature. Because we can be, we may be in the church for almost uh, several years or decades and remain the same. Kumbaga, walang uh, pagbabago diba, sa ating mga buhay. And so, it's possible for uh, na mangyari na ang isang 3-year-old Christian may be more mature than a 30-year-old Christian. Ako kanya pa? Because uh, yung pong, uh, length of uh, Christian, length of time na ikaw ay Christian is not the key indicator for spiritual maturity. Okay? The second thing, oh, isang maling uh, measurement of spiritual maturity ay yung knowledge. Yung dami ng mga kaalaman ano, patungkol sa salita ng Diyos. Let me, let me tell you, mga kapatid, uh, yung knowledge is essential for spiritual growth. Na, nakukunin niyo po? But this is not the key indicator. 
Because there are many people who know their Bible very well. In fact, during the time of Jesus, yung mga uh, religious leaders, the scribes, the teachers of the law, they are expert sa scriptures. And yet, they crucified Jesus Christ. And even sa panahon natin ngayon, maraming mga tao nakakaalam naman, they have knowledge about God's Word. Kahit ngayon mga kulto, no? minsan kabisado pa nila, mas kabisado pa nila yung Bible, but they are not actually growing in Christ. They do not have a personal relationship with the Lord. Even si Satan nga, no? he knows the Scriptures very well. Alam niyo po ba yan? Kabisado niya po, nilalaman ng Biblia. And he is expert in manipulating people's minds. And so, it does not, it, it, it cannot be the indicator for spiritual maturity. Hindi pwedeng, hindi, hindi porke marami kang alam ay mature ka na. Nakuha niyo po? So it's not more of a cognitive, but it's how you actually respond uh, to the Word of God and apply it to your life. Number three is, another misconception is yung tinatawag natin na zeal. Ano you may display it's exuberant in the Christian life, maybe you are zealous, kumbaga, lahat ng tao alam na ikaw ay Christian because you are telling them, I'm proud to be a Christian. Di ba? You may uh, uh, post every day, punuin mo yung Facebook araw-araw ng uh, uh, tayo to, mga Bible verses. At ikaw araw-araw magsuot ng mga t-shirt na nakalagay, I'm proud to be a Christian. I love Jesus. Di ba? And you may have a lot of stickers in your house, telling that you are a Christian, but at the same time, you are prob- maybe you are living a double life, meaning we are you are not you are not responding to God uh, in a way that is you are submitting to Him. So you may display a, a zeal, no? Pwede tayong maging zealous, but that does not mean we are spiritually mature. Another is uh, your activism. I'm not saying na yung activism po, hindi po ito tungkol sa ano, ha? sa uh, pagiging activista. Activism means very ano, active uh, in the ministries, doing a lot of activities in the church. So we think that the busier we are, the more mature we are. Tama po ba yun? Pag busy tayo sa church, dami natin ginagawa, mature tayo. What do you think? And sometimes, ano po ang problema? When we become very busy, so busy in the activities, we actually fail to undergo the process of disciple-making o yung ating, misa pwede natin mapabayaan, no? yung ating pong spiritual growth because of our busyness. So that cannot be a key indicator. Another is yung position and title. Ah, diba, tayo, I, I think, bawat isa sa atin may desire, no? na yung pangalan natin madagdaga ng titulo, hindi ba? And we are working hard to have a position and title. And allow, allow, allow me to tell you na hindi naman po masama po yan. Ano? Sa Bible, the Bible is not against positions and titles. But let me tell this, mga kapatid. God is not impressed with our positions and titles. He is not impressed. What He is desiring is to have men and women who are fully submitted to Him. So it's not more of what you, kung ano yung napatunayan mo, it's not more of your accolades, but more of your submission to God that really matters uh, when you talk about spiritual maturity. Okay? Another, ito pa yung panghuli, ano, giftedness. What can you say about that? Does giftedness mean spiritual maturity? There are so many gifted people and we are impressed by their uh, yung kausayan, ano, mausay magsalita, matalino, they are able to uh, explain principles and convince people to believe uh, the Bible. And we are impressed, di ba, sa mga gifted people. And kaya nga sa mga ano, uh, qualification, pagpipili tayo ng mga ministers, minsan lagi natin nagiging batayan yan, ano, yung kausayan, yung giftedness. But actually, Ano po ba that spiritual immaturity can be hidden even in our giftedness? Nakukuha niyo po? A person may be so spiritually mature and yet he, is, he possesses excellent ability to convey the Word of God to other people. So hindi po yung kahusayan mga kapatid, no? 
ang key indicator ng spiritual maturity. Some people think that they are led by gifted leaders, but they are actually led by, uh, they are actually manipulated by spiritually infant people. Nako kayo po mga kapatid. So hindi po giftedness ang batayan uh, ng uh, spiritual maturity. Uh, because often, oftentimes people may be fooled with the person's giftedness thinking that yun nga, yung mga leaders po ay uh, mahusay. No? So hindi po yung kahusayan ano, ang masasabi nating batayan ng ating pong um, tinatawag na spiritual maturity. So the question now is, what is spiritual maturity? Di ba? Ano, ano ba ang sinasabi ng Biblia patukos sa spiritual maturity? So allow me to share with you a passage that I think crucial, very important na pag natin so that we will have, I think this is just an, a basic background on what uh, spiritual maturity is all about and how can we mature in Christ. Di ba? Basahin po natin ito, Colossians 1, 28 to 29. Him we proclaim. Sino yung Him? Jesus Christ, no? Kaya sabi sa ibang translation, we proclaim Christ. We proclaim Him, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all His energy that He powerfully works within me. Now, you notice here, yung, nag, nandiyan yung word na mature in Christ, no? And the word that was used in the original language is teleos, and it actually means in uh, uh, tayo to, actuality, ang kahulugan po nan ay perfect, meaning complete, no? not lacking anything, or fully grown or fully developed. So, yan po ang ibig sabihin po, when, when, the Bible, uh, when the New Testament talks about maturity, there is that level of uh, perfection. Hindi ibig sabihin na ano, no? perfecto tayo, ano? may mga taong perfecto but it means completion no pagiging uh, uh, wala lacking nothing you know? so tayo bilang mga Kristiyano there are so many areas in our life that requires growth or needs growth maybe hindi natin hindi tayo aware there are so many things sa buhay natin na kinakailangan po tayo maggrow now here in this verse i want you to see important elements for spiritual maturity we, that we may be, uh, we tend to overlook. No? Anong sabi ni Paul? We proclaim Christ. So we, referring to the Apostle Paul and the other teachers of the Bible. And ang sabi niya, we are proclaiming Christ and we are warning who? Every one or every believer. No, napansin niyo po, uh, sino po ang mga involved po dito for the spiritual maturity of every believer? Tinan niyo po ha? Ito, uh, let me give to you this diagram. This is, uh, the, the, these are the important elements for a believer to grow in Christ, to grow into maturity. Of course, there is God, and then self, and then other believers. There are many people who, are, um, who have misconceptions about kung paano sila magmamature in Christ. So some, na, na, uh, they are struggling because they are doing it on their own. So self, no? Tinatay nilang baguhin yung sarili nila and then they end up frustrated. Ano yung kanta before na, no? Na gusto kong bumait pero hindi ko magawa. <laughs> Di ba? Yung gusto mo nang baguhin yung sarili mo pero hindi mo bago. Because you are trying it uh, on your own uh, strength, no? Which is very difficult, no? By the way, kung sa self, kaya mong baguhin yung mga behavior mo. You can have a behavioral modification. Pero, on your own, you cannot actually change your, the condition of your inner life. You need the other elements. No? Of course, you need God. Some people, ang pananaw naman nila, it is God who will make them spiritually mature. Kung baga, trabaho lang to ni Lord. No? Wala akong cooperation or involvement. What do you think about that? They kept on praying, Lord, baguhin mo ako. Hindi po ako mapagpatawad na tao. I am a person who is so unforgiving with the, with the people. And they keep on, keep on praying every day, Lord, please help me 
to become a forgiving person. Every day. Pero wala nangyayari. Ano? What, what, what do you think is the reason? Because you are thinking that si God lang yung may, may ano, uh, siya lang ang magbabago sa atin. No? So, which means, mga kapatid, uh, we, we lack yung, ano, no, yung three elements po na ito, which is yung self and other believers. Kumbaga, si God lang. Let me tell you this, mga kapatid, God will not do the work that He has entrusted you to do. He will help you, pero yung pagpapatawad, that is something that you should do. Nakukuha niyo po? That is not something that God will do for you. You can ask God to help you. Lord, please help me. Yung aking puso, tulungan mo po. But you need to do it. No? And then, of course, we need other believers. No, It's not something that uh, you and God, ano, hindi lang kayo ni Lord ang involved. You need other believers. No? How many of you have uh, grown uh, in the faith because of the help of other people? May mga naalala ba kayo na tumulong sa inyo sa inyong spiritual journey? Ayun po sa akin, napakarami mga tao that have been uh, beneficial in my spiritual journey. Mula pa nung ako yung unang kristyano, yung nag-share sa akin sa campus ministry, iba na po, i- i- then I uh, uh, grew up in a church, iba na yung nag-disciple sa akin, uh, isang pastor then Patay na po yun, yung pastor na yun, no? But God continues to help me grow because of several people that came into my life. And these people, God used. They, they were used by the Lord to help me grow into maturity. Nakuha niyo po, mga kapatid. <coughs> so, this is crucial, mga kapatid. By the way, in the last part of our uh, sermon series this month, ito pong uh, last uh, week of uh, August, uh, ang pag-uusapan po natin dito sa church ay about spiritual companion. No? Choosing spiritual companion. Sino yung mga tao sa paligid mo or sino yung mga tao that God may use to help you grow in the faith? Okay? Uh, which means you will be accountable to them. You will pray for them. I will pray for people na ilagay ng Panginoon sa inyo to help you grow in the faith. So, mahalaga po ito, mga kapatid, no? Kasi oftentimes, itong tatlong elements na to ay hindi po kumpletong nating nagagawa, ano? O hindi, hindi natin, hindi siya involved uh, most of the time. Sabi nga ni Edmund Chan, there are three ways we neglect the Great Commission or yung disciple making. Number one is when we are not doing it. Second is when we are uh, when we stop doing it. And third is when we are doing it wrongly. Di ba? Yun daw yung mga ways para tayo daw ay uh, maneglect po natin ang disciple making. When we are doing it wrongly. So kahit pa itry natin na itry, na baguhin na ating sarili, apart from the help of God and other people, it will be very difficult. It is impossible to grow into maturity if hindi po kasama itong uh, mga elements po na ito. Okay? So, this is a joint effort, mga kapatid. This is a joint effort. Does that give you um, motivation? Ngayon alam mo na hindi ka nag-iisa. Di ba? God is there to help you. And God wants you to cooperate with Him, to participate in your growth as you respond to Him daily. Hindi po ba? I should allow people to also uh, be, uh, be uh, accountable sa iyo, sa iyong uh, spiritual growth. So ito po ay, uh, ito pong uh, triangle po na to, important po yan, na elements. Now, today, let's uh, see from the passage, what, what does it tell us about spiritual maturity? And the first thing that we notice here is, uh, sabi ni Paul, we proclaim Him, we proclaim Christ. It means that, Christ should be made known to us. Christ should be made known sa ating pong mga buhay. So we need to grow in our knowledge, our intimacy, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because uh, Christ is the focal point of spiritual maturity. And so wag po nating imimiss po itong important principle na to, the person Referring to Jesus Christ. We need to grow in our relationship 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the foundation of spiritual maturity. Na tayo ay lalong lumalalim ang kaugnayan sa Kanya. So when we talk about uh, Christ, we need to understand, mga kapatid, who He is and what He has done for us. Hindi po ba? We need to grow dun sa pagkaunawa na yon. But hindi lang tayo dapat lumago sa pagkaunawa sa kung sino si Kristo at kung ano yung ginawa niya sa ating mga buhay. We need to change our values in such a way that uh, yung ating life orientation, yung, mga, uh, yung buhay natin, is um, under the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we allow Him, uh, we allow these principles about Christ na mag-manifest sa ating pong mga buhay. Na? So, it means we need to change value. Magkaroon, kinakilangan natin magkaroon ng uh, pagbabago sa mga bagay na pinapahalagahan po natin. And here, uh, the focus is Jesus Christ. We need to be closer and uh, more, uh, to, we need to know Christ more sa ating pong mga buhay. Uh, the Apostle Paul mentioned in Philippians 3, ando yung main goal niya sa buhay? Kayo po ba, meron po kayong mga goals? May goals po kayo? O iba wala ng goal? Marami po mga tao, wala na doon pangarap. Eh. Anong pangarap mo? Wala akong, kap- akong pangarap. So si Paul, anong goal niya? To know Christ. I want to know Christ. Hindi niya kilala si Kristo. He knows Christ. no? But he wants to know Christ more. Sabi niya, And the power of His resurrection and may share it to His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death. Gusto niya na lumago sa pagkakilala kay Kristo. Kahit kilala niya na si Kristo, but he wants to grow more. Kaya ang sabi niya sa next verse, verse 12, not that I have already obtained this or I am already perfect. Uh, binagit niya yung word na teleo, meaning mature. Hindi sa ako yung naabot ko na yung maturity, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me His own. What is he talking about here, mga kapatid? Regarding yung kanyang pagkakilala kay Kristo, sabi niya, hindi pa siya kompleto. Nakuha niya po? Meron pang... Uh, he needs to grow more in his knowledge of Jesus. Now, in the New Testament, particularly, when we, hear, when we read the word know or knowledge, I want you to note, mga kapatid, na hindi lang po ito about sa cognitive or mga information, ano, na, oh, I, I need to have more information about Jesus. When we talk about knowing God, it means experiencing Him in a deeper way every day sa ating pong mga buhay. So knowledge here, hindi lang po yan idea, ano, but experiencing. Okay. Para maunawaan po natin, ako po, by the way, ay pinanganak, lumaki, na, na buhay for 28 years dun sa aking hometown, no, sa Pangil Laguna. How many of you have uh, been to Pangil Laguna? Pwede po mong sa kamay? Mga nakarating na sa Pangil. Yun. Mga nag-OJ din, nakarating din doon. Yung iba natin mga kalalakihan, nakasama ko rin, nagpunta doon sa Ambon Ambon Falls. So, I can honestly say that I know Pangil Laguna. Nakuha niyo po? Because I live there, I know the people there, the places there, I have experience there, to live there for 28 years. I live there and I experienced that. Which means I can say I know Pangil Laguna. But if a person, for, for example, hindi pa siya ever nakarating sa pangil, and then he has a lot of information, nag-research siya sa Google, punong-puno siya, he, he has a compilation of all the details and information, yung mga residente ng lugar na yon. Can we really say that this person know Pangil Laguna? He knows about Pangil Laguna, but he does not know Pangil Laguna. Meaning, there is no experience of the life in Pangilaguna. No, kanya po? So, when the, Bible, when the Bible says, I want to know Christ, kasama po doon, hindi lang po yung cognitive, but it involves yung maranasan siya deeper, to, to have a deeper relationship with Him, to know Him more. No? So, kaya sabi ni Paul, hindi pa ako mabot doon sa perfection, sa completeness. No? Gusto ko pang lumago sa pagkakilala sa Panginoon. Kaya nga sabi niya sa verse 15, Let those of you who are mature think this way, that if, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal also that to you. So what does this mean, mga kapatid? Binagit niyo ulit yung teleos, no? Let those who are mature think this way. So, 
Kaya nga sinabi niya na hindi pa siya nag-achieve sa maturity. Pero ang sabi niya, yung mga mature, ganito dapat ang kaisipan. It's like telling na ako ay mature na. Tama ba? Pero hindi pa ako mature. Sabi ni Paul. What does this mean, mga kapatid? Ano po, ang isang tao, even though he is maturing, alam niyo po ba that no person in this life can really arrive to the point of his life that wala na siyang, wala nang maidadagdag pa sa kanya. Nakuha niyo po, there is no more area of growth in his life. Kahit si Apostle Pablo, alam niyo po yan, alam niya po yan, no? na hindi pa sapat, kulang pa, he, he wants to know more, to experience Christ more in his life. So this is, uh, this is what uh, we want to emphasize to you, mga kapatid. Jesus, no, yung pagkakilala natin kay Kristo, this is the, the focal point of our spiritual maturity. You want to be like Christ? You need to know Christ. No? Kailangan natin makilala siya. Number two, another thing that we, we should note here is the procedure. Yung iba sa atin, gusto ng shortcut. Mahilig tayong... We live in time na gusto natin ng shortcut. Di ba? Ayaw natin ng masyadong maabang detalye. Kaya kung pwede, eh, paki-summarize mo na nga yan. But in disciple making, we have to understand that there is a process. May procedure po ano, na kailangan tayong pagdaanan. And what is the procedure, mga kapatid? God's Word is the instrument for spiritual maturity. Meaning, ito pong sabi ni Paul Jan, ano, we are warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom. Diba? So, yung teaching dyan uh, involves actually the scriptures. But as I said, it, it's not more of transferring knowledge or transferring information ang disciple making. Hindi niya sinasabi na we are teaching everyone so that they become knowledgeable. Napansin niyo po? We are teaching everyone so that they will grow into maturity to become like Christ. Diba? Merong purpose, no? da, hindi lang magkaroon ng nalalaman, but they uh, orient their lives uh, with those truths, do sa katotohanan po na yan. So, importante po na, na tayo po ay lumago sa salita po ng Diyos. The Bible is vital in raising us to become spiritually matured believers. And that's why we need to be rooted in the words of God. Wala pong, uh, sabi nga, walang shortcut. It's the Word of God. You need to, you want to mature, we need to immerse ourselves sa salita ng ating Panginoon. No other way, mga kapatid. We need the Word of God. We need to be rooted. We need to, and as I said, we need to go beyond the cognitive aspect, yung just knowing it by our mind. But we need to live according to the truth of God's Word. So this is crucial in our spiritual journey. Number three, we need to understand the purpose of spiritual maturity. Anong purpose natin? Christ-likeness is the goal of spiritual maturity. Sabi ni Paul John, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Meaning, mga kapatid, we cannot separate spiritual maturity and Jesus Christ. Na gusto nating uh, maging malago, maging malagong kristyano, we need to grow into Christ-likeness. Maging katulad tayo ng ating Panginoong Yesus. And there are many passages, for example, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to, ano pong sabi ni Paul dyan? Mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ano yung maturity para kay Paul? Sabi niya, nais niya na lahat ng mga mananampataya ay magmature. Sabi niya, until, until we all attain. Hindi niya sinabing, until you attain. Kasama siya, ano? Hindi rin niya sinabing, until we attain. Until all of us, tayong mga mana ng palataya, all of us attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood. So, the apostles, yung aim nila, ay magmature po tayo sa uh, pagkakilala natin sa Panginoon, uh, to maturity in Christ, or Christ-likeness, to the fullness of Christ Jesus. And he continues in verse 15, Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head. Into whom? Into Christ. Grow up into Christ. So Christ is our model. 
in our disciple making. So, ibig sabihin mga kapatid, we need to, uh, our character needs to be conformed to the image of the Son of God, to Jesus Christ. At hindi po yan uh, instant, mga kapatid, it's a process. We need to grow every day to become more like Christ. Ano ba yung mga karakter ni Christ? He is a very loving person. He gave His life for other people. And so, yung love natin should grow, we should grow in love for God and for other people. Just as how Jesus loved us, hindi ba? So, ano pa yung mga karakter ni Christ? Christ is a very humble uh, servant. And we need to grow in humility. He is a patient Savior. And we, know to grow, we need to grow in uh, patience. So there are so many aspects in our lives that requires growth. Pero hindi po yan lalago, mga kapatid, if we, are, sabi ko nga, if we are not cooperating with God. Tayo po, mga kapatid, ang special project ng Panginoon. No? We are God's special project and we can only be transformed if we are cooperating or participating doon sa work ni Jesus Christ sa atin. So, kinakailangan po natin lumago sa pagiging, uh, sa Christ-likeness. So, a spirit, a character formation or spiritual formation is one of the greatest needs today sa Christianity. Kasi sabi ko nga, this is where we skip. This is often overlooked. Because we are thinking that we are busy in the ministry, we are okay spiritually. Alam niyo po, we may be able to serve and be active in the ministry and lead other people and remain unchanged ang ating mga puso. Ako niyo po? Because this is something that most people are not paying attention to. We are not paying attention to our own spiritual growth. No? Kinakailangan po natin, mga kapatid, na i-allow si Lord, i-reveal yun. And sometimes we need to stop from what we are doing to assess what, what's going on within me. Ano bang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa aking buhay? And sometimes, we are not aware. No? If I ask you, mga kapatid, gusto ko po kayong tanongin, are you aware of what's going on in your life right now? Are you aware of what God is doing in your life right now? That's the fundamental question if you, if, if you want to grow in Christ. And are you responding to Him? Ano, do sa mga nire-reveal niya sa'yo. Is he revealing something na, this is an area of growth sa buhay mo, but you are not paying attention. So we need to pay attention sa uh, uh, mga prompting ng ating pong Panginoon. And again, we have to understand that the transformation should not be outward focus. No? Yung pag sinabing ng Biblia na gusto ng Panginoon maging kawangis tayo ni Kristo, this is not about external, ano, Oh, maging kawangis ako ni Kristo. Oh, dapat, ano yung picture ni Jesus? <laughs> dapat maging mas kasing gwapo ako ni Jesus. Maging mahaba rin yung buhok ko. Tapos pag naglalakad ako, mukhang, mukha-mukha ako ni Jesus. Hindi po ganun ibig sabihin ng kamukha ni Jesus. No? We are talking about our inner life, our, our being. And it should be formed to become more like Christ. And we need to allow Him to, to, uh, to mold us Yung conformity dyan, sabi sa Bible, no, we need to be conformed. Ang, ang purpose ng Panginoon sa atin, sabi sa Romans 8.29, is for us to be conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. Di ba? Si Kristo ang ating modelo. At nais ng Panginoon na hubugin tayo. He wants us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And the issue here is about control. No, we allow Christ to take control of our lives. And as we submit to Him, He will be developing us to have that kind of character that is Christ-like. So, importante po na we regularly assess our life. Kung, kung naging mas katulad ba tayo ni Kristo? Do sa tagal na natin, Kristiyano, sa tingin niyo po ba, we are becoming more like Christ? Or we are becoming less like Christ? So, si Christ po ang standard natin, mga kapatid. Na? He is our measurement of spiritual maturity. Now, as we continue, uh, we need to understand that there is a power available for us. No? Sometimes, it's frustrating, a spiritual journey. Naranas yun, yun, napapagod na kayo, or frustrated na. Because you end up struggling with the same struggle that you had before. 
Naakala mo, nalagpasan mo na. Tapos, you fell again. Ako, honestly, as a believer, there were several times in my life, Lord, I so, I'm so frustrated with myself. I do not, I do not know bakit Akala ko, akala ko na overcome ko na to before but it keeps on coming back. Meron ba kayong mga karanasan na ganyan bilang mga mga Christians? You think that nakaka-frustrate no yung yung spiritual journey, you know? We we have a lot of struggles, but this is the key. We have to understand that hindi po tayo dapat mag-rely sa sarili nating power. God's energy is our resource for spiritual maturity. So there is power available for every believer in Christ. Yan ang sabi ni Paul, no? for this I toil, struggling with all his energy. He did not say, with all my energy. I'm not, sabi ni Paul, nag-struggle ako, or I am struggling with all my energy. Hindi po yun ang sinabi niya, no? but all the energy that comes from the Lord. Meaning, may power po na available, na binibigay ang Panginoon sa bawat tao na nagre-rely po sa Kanya. Ano? So, Sabi ni Paul, with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. So this is an inner work of God. Huh? An inner work of God. And God wants us to rely not on our own power and strength. Because apart from him, we can do nothing. We need to rely on his power. Makakaya lang po natin yan kapag tayo po ay nakadepende po sa kanya. So these things are important uh, in our spiritual growth or spiritual maturity. Now, in application, uh, I want you to think about how we can apply uh, the message today. And the first is, we need to be accountable to other believers. As I said, it's a joint effort. It's not just you and God. You need also other believers who will be accountable to you. Tanoyin ko po kayo, are there people who, who are journeying with you in, the, uh, in, in your spiritual journey? Meron po ba? If not, if not, mga kapatid, it will be difficult for you to grow. You need to allow people who can uh, uh, journey with you. Sometimes, kayo po ba sa inyong mga GG, comfortable kayo mag-share ng inyong mga struggles? Lahat ng mga struggles nyo, kaya nyo i-share? Minsan, ito, itong reality, ano? minsan, nag-iisip tayo, ano? share ko kaya ito, baka ako ma-judge dito sa, ano? are they mature enough to uh, understand me and to help me in this uh, struggle? A certain area that uh, needs growth. Alam nyo, importante po ang, although it is risky, but we need to develop that in, in our growth group. No? Magkaroon tayo ng uh, uh, sensitivity and humility rin. Ano? Misal kasi may mag-share, tapos sayo naman, ano, ay, ako hindi ako nag i eh. <laughs> eh, parang mapapasabi na lang tayo, o, oh, edi sana, sana all. <laughs> sana all, hindi na nag i no? uh, I, I hope sa GG, we are that honest enough and open enough to acknowledge that we are all a work in progress. But it doesn't mean na gagamitin natin excuse yan always. Kapag ka na lalaba, lumalabas yung ating mga uh, character na ano, no? hindi kaaya-aya, ano? we keep on making excuses. Ganito na talaga ako eh. Narinig nyo na yun? Ito, ito na talaga ang weakness ko eh. Ganito talaga ako eh. Ang masasabi ko lang dyan is talagang ganyan ka na lang. Ayun po yan. If you keep on saying, ganito na talaga ako, let me tell this, 10 years from now, ganyan ka pa rin. Because you always make that your excuse to tell others na, oh, wala nang pagbabago sa akin, ganito na talaga ako. But, but I want you to understand, to make some ano, uh, growth in that area, God is, God wants you to grow in that area of your weakness. And He puts people around you he has put people around you to uh, whom you, you can be accountable with. So, important po yan, no? accountability. Be accountable to other believers. Second is, be open for correction. May mga tao po ba sa inyo na hindi natatakot na i-correct po kayo? Alam nyo, pasalamatan nyo sila. Because they love you enough that they want you to change something that people do not like about you. They love you enough. And we need those people who are so who are honest. Yung iba, yung mga, kami mga pastor, medyo yung ibang mga tao natatakot siguro mag-correct sa amin, no? Yung mga medyo uh, ano tayo ito. Hindi ganoon ka comfortable. That's why I allow, I allow some people to correct me. 
For example, my wife, my, I, I have that uh, relationship with her that I allow her to correct me. And sometimes I become defensive. No? <laughs> yeah, be open for correction, mga kapatid. And one thing that we really need to get rid of is yung defensiveness natin. Minsan, alam na, na put into surface. Di ba? Na put uh, to surface yung mga hidden na uh, weaknesses natin. Then we are not courageous enough and honest enough to acknowledge them and to make, ratific- uh, uh, to make changes. Yung po ang problema po natin. No? Alam, nakikita na natin yung mga kainaan natin, but we are not uh, working on it. So, we need to be open for correction. We allow people to correct us. Kayo po, mga kapatid, meron po ba? Kung wala, if no person can correct you, I want to guarantee you, you will remain the same. Nothing will change sa yung character. So, you, you allow accountability. You, you, you are open for other people's correction. So, you can journey actually with uh, other believers. And lastly, we need to be willing to change. Now that you know kung ano ba yung mga areas that needs, uh, that requires growth in your part, so okay na kailangan po tayong willing po na uh, isubmit yun sa Panginoon. No? Uh, allow God to change us. Ang problema, some, some, sometimes gusto natin baguhin, kaso, you do not actually uh, uh, step para baguhin yun. So dapat meron tayong mga specific steps na babaguhin. Ba, ikaw, magagalit yan. Meron po ba dito may anger issues? Apektado buong family mo eh. Pag nagagalit ka eh, para kang sumasabog na vulkan. Lahat ng tao nagagalit sa'yo. What should you do, mga kapatid? You allow people to be accountable to you. And to tell you, oh, you are medyo nag exit na yung iyong uh, 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 emotion. You need to uh, process it. Yung emotion mo ngayon. Deal with God. Nakukuha niyo po? Kasi hindi po nat, Misan di tayo aware eh. No? Yung mga blind spot natin. But when we journey with people, ako, I'm so thankful because uh, I have people who have uh, given me uh, yung corrections. Although masakit, no? <laughs> Although at times, defensive tayo, no? Hindi naman. Bakit? Di ba? Pero um, kailangan po natin yung mga pe. We need, uh, as I mentioned about the triangle or the essential elements for spiritual maturity. So here, ito pong uh, action po natin is, I have that it's spurred in you yung uh, desire no, to grow more into Christ likeness, to grow more into maturity. Again, it's a process. Some of us may be so tired now or frustrated. But God wants you, God wants to change you. You are His special project. God wants you to co- cooperate with Him as He transforms you to become like. His Son, Jesus Christ. Sige po, tayo po ay manalangin. Pwede ko po ba kayong i-invite na tumayo? Let's thank God. Father God, salamat po. Marami pong salamat sa iyo pong mga salita na siyang uh, humuhubog po sa amin to become conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus. To have, to develop intimate relationship with Christ. Salamat po, Panginoon. There are times, Lord, we are not open. We are defensive, Lord. Lord, alisin niyo po yung mga defensiveness namin. Alisin mo po yung selfishness namin, Panginoon. Some people are hurting because of our actions, Lord. Because of the way we, we live our lives, we orient our lives. Sometimes, instead of being Heal, uh, agents of healing, we become carriers of sickness in this world. And the people around us are actually hurting because of our foolishness, because of our unwillingness na ikaw ang magbago sa aming mga buhay. Lord, tulungan niyo kami, Panginoon. And also, Lord, it is my prayer that you will surround us with godly people, godly men and women who will journey with us. Pray for our brothers and sisters. Help them to find spiritual companions who will help them develop uh, in their uh, spiritual life, Panginoon. Pagpalay mo po ang bawat isa. And help us in our struggles. May the power of Christ continue to manifest in our lives as we submit to you sa aming pong mga buhay. Salamat po, Panginoon. Ito po ang aming pong dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen, amen.
Purihin po ang Panginoon. Please take your seats po mga kapatid. And we'll continue to worship God. I hope that we are, able, we are processing no, yung message ng Panginoon sa atin. And today uh, is the first Sunday of the month. And we will be commemorating uh, the death uh, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. His finished sacrifice para po sa atin. Ayun po, this is the fundamental uh, truth na ating pong uh, itinuturo sa, salita, sa, uh, mga, sa lahat ng tao. No? We proclaim Christ. His finished work. No? And what, what did He do, mga kapatid? Siya po ay namatay, sabi nga sa Biblia, para tayo itubusin sa ating mga kasalanan. So by His blood, we are all redeemed. And that's what we are going to uh, remember ngayon pong umaga. Sige po, as we uh, come to the Lord in prayer, let's also acknowledge yung ating pong mga kasalanan. No? Let's confess to the Lord. Let's allow God to examine our hearts as we uh, partake of these symbols. These symbols do not forgive our sins. I want you to understand that. It's just a reminder of the works of Christ po para sa atin. What actually uh, forgives sins is the Lord, no? uh, His blood. And of course, as we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us from all our unrighteousness. So sa ating pong, uh, paglapit po ngayon sa ating Panginoon, let's allow God to search our hearts. And let's pray that He will remind us of His great love for us. Lord, ngayon po ay tatanggap kami ng mga simbolo na ito. And you have commanded your church to perpetually commemorate your sacrifice on the cross, which is sufficient, sufficient, Lord, to redeem us and to save us from sin and death. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, because you have been our atoning sacrifice, the sacrifice for our sins. And because of that, we can uh, have a relationship with, the, with, the God, with God the Father. Salamat, Panginoong Jesus, sa iyong ginawang sacrifice. And as we partake of this symbol, Panginoon, remind us uh, of your great love for us. May you also cleanse us as we uh, confess our sins sa iyo sa umagang ito. Salamat po. Ito pong aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shall we all stand, mga kapatid? Let us all raise the bread. Let's meditate on the Word of God ngayon pong umaga. Think about what Christ has done to express His love for you and me. 
For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Ating pong kainin ang tinapay. Let's all raise the cup. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's say these words, In memory of Christ till he returns. In memory of Christ till he returns. Inumin po natin ng Praise be to God. And you may now please uh, take your seats, mga kapatid. So as your cups are being collected, let's prepare our hearts uh, to give back to the Lord uh, for His ministry, acknowledging uh, His ownership sa ating po mga resources, and honoring Him for providing for all of our needs. Tayo po ay muling manalangin. Father God, thank you for all your provision. Lord, napakarami yung blessing sa amin spiritual blessings, and even, Lord, material blessings, you have continually provided for all our needs. And we give back to you because we honor you and we acknowledge your ownership of all these resources. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne Before the Holy One of Heaven It's only by your blood And it's only through your mercy Right, so uh, let me continue with some important, uh, important announcements before we end our uh, worship service today. Uh, first, let me announce to you that after the service, we will be welcoming our new members. No? Dito, uh, wag na po kayong aalis, mga kapatid, kasi mag-proceed mag po tayo sa ating program for the right hand. So, sama-sama po tayo na i-welcome ang ating mga first-timers, or sorry, mga uh, new members. And... Uh, we also want to announce you na tuloy-tuloy lang po ang ating registration sa ating camp. Please approach our camp committee. And some, most of the time, meron po tayong tables dyan sa labas where you can actually uh, register. No? So please take time, mga kapatid, to uh, uh, do that. And we want as much as possible lahat tayo, no? mga kapatiran natin, to uh, join this camp. Also, to all GCF Santa Rosa members, we want you to uh, stay for uh, a short meeting uh, after the service. So, bago po tayo mag, uh, anong tag dito? Right hand. So, magmi-meeting po muna tayo. Okay lang po kahit umatin po yung mga non-members. I just want to make some important announcement uh, for you uh, to know what's going to happen in the uh, succeeding weeks. Okay? Sige po. So, uh, yan. Announcement din po. Sa Saturday na po ito, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., dito po gaganapin, no? Yung ating Love Life Couples Fellowship and our speaker is uh, one of the uh, radio announcers ng DCAS, si Bishop Jonel Milan. Um, also, yung ating po mga women, yung wow natin, will be having a fellowship sa last Saturday of the month, yung pong ROAR. Yan. At ito po ay gaganapin ng 12 noon up to 3 p.m. We praise the Lord, no? Kahapon uh, was a successful uh, youth fellowship. Uh, almost sa puno po itong ating place ng mga kabataan, no? nakakatuwa. Kahapon. So, pwede ba natin palapakan ng Panginoon? No? 
for that development because we have been praying for our church to be able to disciple the next generation. So let, let's continue to support no, yung gawain po ng mga kabataan. Yung mga parents natin, no, let's bring our uh, young people here. Uh, once a month lang naman po yan, no, every first uh, Saturday of the month. Okay, so uh, next Sunday naman po, uh, ng 2 p.m., uh, para po sa mga youth, there will be District 1 Youth Fellowship. Gaganapin po ito sa uh, GCF New Valley. Yan. So sa mga kabataan po natin, uh, we, like, we would like to invite you po. Uh, sa ating pong mga first-timers, uh, meron po ba tayong mga uh, first-time attendee? Pwede po ba namin kayong i-request na tumayo so that uh, we can uh, recognize you? Ano po ba? Ayun, wala pa. Okay, so uh, Ate Joby uh, is here. By the way, if you want to become a member of our church, siya po ang in, in charge sa mga classes po. Siya nag-i-schedule po. So, she has an important announcement regarding the kids' ministry naman. <laughs> okay po. So, yeah. magandang tanghali po. For the, ano po, for the membership, meron po tayong last batch for this uh, year, starting September po. So, if you want to be part of GCF Santa Rosa, meron po tayong sign-up sheet. And yung mga schedule po for all the classes, nandun din po. So, pwede po kayong mamili doon. And then, for the kids' ministry naman po, for all the... Mommies and daddies na meron po yung uh, kids doon sa Sunday school natin, we will be having yung graduation po ng ating SBVS by next Sunday, August 13. And we are requesting po na yung mga kids natin ay dali nyo dito ng uh, right after second service. So attend na lang po kayo ng second service and then right after second service po yung graduation para inisa na lang po namin para hindi po hiwalay. Kasi previously, Uh, first service, second service. So ngayon po, ang gagawin natin is ano na, uh, isang buo na right after uh, second service po. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much po, Sister Jovi. And uh, before we forget, let's greet our birthday celebrants. Kanina na si Sister Susana. So tomorrow is her birthday. Happy birthday po. At ganyan din po kay Brother Amard. Yung pa ng pangalan noon, no? Amard. Si Kuya Ron. And, uh, to, uh, sa 8. At si Sister Joji Gonzalez. Did I see Sister Joji kanina? There at the back. Ayan. Jocelyn, beautiful name. At si Kisha. Kisha in Tertas. Uh, si Ate Kisha. Baka sa third service po. No? And then, si uh, Sister Wayne Andaya. Happy birthday po. No? And kay uh, Sister Melody Balwarte and Mary Ruth Hader. Nasa ano naman to? Uh, silang outreach natin. And of course, si Teacher Maui. Yan, yan pala ang full name ni Teacher Maui. Ayan, happy birthday po. Manuel Reyes Jr. po ba, Jr.? Manuel Reyes Jr. Yan. So, happy birthday po sa inyo pong lahat. And, uh, sige po, tayo pong lahat ay tumayo. After this, uh, we will start our meeting po. Let's all rise. Salamat po Panginoon sa iyong mga salita and allow us to process that, help us Lord as even as we uh, uh, part ways Panginoon na ang mga salita mo mameditate pa namin sa aming pang-araw-araw po na buhay. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen, amen, and amen. Have a blessed day po mga kapatid. Sige po, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon and you may now please take your seats. Sige po, pwede na po kayo maupo. Saglit lang po ito mga patid, no? just 10 minutes. Allow me to announce to you. So I will begin kapag po nakaupo na po tayong lahat. No? <laughs> Yan. So antayin lang po natin yung iba.